Okay, how's everybody doing this evening? Of course, my name's Kent and the channel is EOS San Diego. And uh, this is another version of the uh, EOS San Diego nightly video, basically about all cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, and their challenge application, challenge token. So what I wanna talk about a little bit tonight is I gotta talk a little bit about this, this, uh, this idea that uh, uh, really, we really got, we got to start getting real around here. I mean, this is getting really overly, overly ridiculous as far as the negativity is concerned. Um, I mean, we just got to get a reality check. Got to get a, a huge reality check. There's going to be some very, very, very sorry people here in the very near future that they didn't take advantage of some of these, uh, some of these, uh, uh, some of these cryptocurrencies at this point in time, because I just want to run everybody through a little bit of history here. Uh, the little bit of history I want to talk about is I want to talk about first about the, the original uh, uh, cryptocurrency, the original blockchain, which is Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin started in 2009. Um, as of recently, I think it's around seven, actually getting close to $8,000. It's gone up here a little bit in the last couple of days. So went from virtually nothing to $8,000 in a little over 10 years. Unheard of. Nothing ever has done that well in the history of the world has any investment that has uh, the widespread um, reach as Bitcoin ever done so well. You know, maybe some stupid little isolated thing. Someone put a few bucks in and made a, a few hundred thousand dollars or a few million dollars, who knows, but but nothing with the kind of reach and the, the kind of uh, uh, the 10 year um, exposure that Bitcoin has has ever done this well. Nothing. Nothing's done even close. And believe me, I was in the penny stock market. I was a penny stock broker. I mean, the most highly speculative stocks you could you, you could basically own are the kind of stocks that we dealt with. The, uh, the pink sheets, uh, the initial public offerings where uh, we raised a few million dollars and um, we had nothing but blue sky ahead of us. I mean, even those that would double, triple, quadruple, and even if they did get bought out eventually, which most did not, um, they, they never made the kind of money Bitcoin made. Never, 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 ever anything I've ever seen has done as well as Bitcoin's doing or has done in the last 10 years. Gone, gone from virtually nothing to over $20,000 and still over $8,000. And it's not a scam. It's not something that anybody has been able to, people have gotten arrested, people have, have, have stopped doing because they, because it's illegal, nothing. It's, it's completely legitimate, ongoing enterprise or uh, activity that's going on today that has gone from nothing, vir virtually nothing, to over $8,000 or close to $8,000 right now. Nothing bats in the league of Bitcoin. Nothing bats in the league of Bitcoin. So that's the original cryptocurrency has done so well over the last 10 years. So, so well, better than anything. No investment even comes close to that. And then you got Ethereum, literally the same thing. Ethereum has gone from a few cents to, to uh, uh, you know, what is the top of Ethereum? Um, I can't even remember what the very top was, but basically uh, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of percentage of increase and in profitability in those two, Ethereum and Bitcoin. This is what we're dealing with. And not only did Bitcoin do this, this many, many thousands of dollars of appreciation, many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars of appreciation, it did it without any, even anybody knowing who created it. It didn't have like a, a, a principal owner, somebody like a Steve Jobs, somebody like a Bill Gates, somebody like um, Warren Buffett pushing it. Nobody even knows who created it. You know, Satoshi Nakamoto, nobody knows who he is. Nobody knows, nobody even knows anything about who it is. They didn't have that force, that driving force of a company or a group of people or some dynamic leader like Steve Jobs or Steve Wozniak or somebody like that that was pushing Bitcoin. It was, it, it did this all on its own. The power of the protocol, the power of the idea without any personalized uh, individual driving it made it this valuable and this unique and this prosperous and still today uh, still going like crazy. So this is the technology behind what we're dealing with today. And this is why how people can be negative over something that has done so well is is kind of unbelievable and really is gone too far. I mean, either you're 
you know, you're in a place where everybody is saying cryptos are dead, DIOS is dead, Bitcoin's dead, or they're, you know, they're paying hundreds of millions of billions of dollars for Dogecoin. I don't know, Dogecoin, whatever it was, whatever it is. You know, that's the issue right now. The issue is, is this has gone too far negative. It's the pendulum has swung too far to the negativity. And that's what I'm trying to tell people is this has gone too negative. And it will, this will get much, much better. You, you, you've got too much, too much, too much going on here for this not to be uh, doing well uh, and not to do much better than it is right now. Because it really is uh, in very much on the south side of how, where it should be, very, very much so. Uh, the other thing I think that's going on right now is the fact that you have with EOS and Ethereum, almost $20 billion with a market cap chasing some idea. There really isn't anything going on on either one of the platforms. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the top ideas that are going on are, are, are games that everybody already understands. They don't need to explain. Nobody needs to be explained how to play dice. Nobody has to be explained how to play roulette. So those games that are just transferred to the uh, blockchain are what is getting a lot of the users. The, the uniqueness that we could create on these blockchains has, not, has yet to happen. Although we and some others are trying to make it happen, we're trying to make it happen with the challenge application, something that's never been done before. Most of what's going on right now between Ethereum and EOS is just stuff that people already understood. It was, it was, it was something that people didn't have to think about how to do. I mean, anyone can uh, go on, uh, uh, download an application or play an application, put an application on your phone, that all you do is you just push a button and you roll some dice and you win or lose. That's easy to understand, but that's what, $20 billion in market cap is chasing right now. There's a few few ideas out there that have a few thousand users. We need to come up with better ideas and need to have more time to develop those ideas. And of course, with when people are so negative and nobody wants to put any money into development, these ideas are not gonna happen. There needs to be some injection of, of, of money into this or some creativity or somebody that has some belief and faith in this for this to start to grow and take off, and it will. The development is happening. We are developing right now. We are doing something. And you can see it with our application. Just ja download the challenge application and play around with it a little bit and see what we're doing. And we're gonna make it simpler because we understand simplification is the, is the key to this thing. So the more simpler we can make it, the more it will get used, the more uh, people will use it. And if you get something that even has a few thousand users right now, you've got a huge winner because you have so much money trying to chase a few ideas, so, many, so much money trying to just wait for a few ideas to come about to happen here that aren't, that aren't being built and that aren't happening. So, I mean, it's like um, TikTok. Uh, TikTok is, what, a 15 second video? I mean, they have created a platform so you can uh, upload or put on their platform a 15 second video. That's not valuable. Nobody really cares that you create a, a, a something to, to create a 50 minute. What is valuable is the creative minds out there that are putting this content on, on TikTok. And that's why they've got 500 million users because there's a lot of people out there creating a lot of pretty cool stuff that's 15 seconds long. I think you can loop it for 30 or actually I think if, at 60, it's 60 seconds. You can have 15 second videos, string them together for 60 seconds. So basically a 15 second video, make some creative little funny thing or do something that's kind of interesting or even like in 15 seconds, tell someone how they can make a million dollars or how they can do a business. I mean, I've seen people that literally in 15 seconds can tell you, hey, this is how you create a business. This is how I made a million dollars. This is how I, I did something from Amazon, this is, a, you know, in 15 seconds, that's what we need. We need those ideas where things are quick, easy to understand. People don't have long attention spans and people don't want to sit down and go through numerous steps in order to figure something out. It's got to be quick, it's got to be fast, it's got to be easy to understand and it's got to be something fun for people to do. It can't be overly complicated. It can't have a lot of burden to it. This is what we need to have happen and there's, there's literally billions of dollars chasing just some good ideas. And if you can come up with one of those good ideas, it literally will be, uh, it'll be mind boggling how successful it will be. So that's what we're, what's going, what we're going through today. We're going through overly, overly, over ne ne being overly negative about stuff that I think is, that, that shouldn't be overly negative, that has proven the test of time. Bitcoin's been around for a long time. Ethereum's been around a long time. EOS has been around for a while. None of these ideas are going away. They're just, they're just hunting ideas. They're just platforms for people to build something on, just like TikTok. 
uh, all Tic Tac is is a simple platform for somebody to post something on. And of course, the creators, the content creators are making it valuable because they're coming up with some pretty good content. So that's all that needs to happen. And when that does happen, this thing will explode. And this thing will explode and everybody will be very, very happy with what it does, how it does. And we're just in that really slow period of time, kind of that period of time where, the, where we've gotten through the, the you know, the, the hype and the over expectations, cleared out some of the ideas that weren't any good, that weren't gonna, that were never gonna materialize or be built. And now we're at the, the part where things haven't quite materialized, they haven't quite been all put together yet, but they're very, very close. And that's where we're at, where we're at. So nobody needs to be over neg overly negative right now. And nobody needs to think that this isn't gonna be something that's gonna be wildly successful. As I've said before, I mean, I've heard a lot of people here recently just say that they're done, that they're getting out and they're never gonna come back, that they've lost their money and they don't think that there's any hope. When you start hearing things like that, uh, that will be the time when, 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 when it will turn around, when people start thinking that they've got to get out of it, when they just can't take it any long, longer, that the pain is just too great and it's time to leave, that's the time to get in. Because those are the successful times. As I said before, I used to get this newsletter, I think it's still around, it's called Blood in the Streets. Those are the times when the people make a lot of money. And those are the times where the, where the people that are successful uh, dive in and get involved. That's the time. And I think we're in one of those times right now. So uh, that's uh, that's the time when things are going to be hopefully very successful. And I think, like I say, we need to get real with the EOS. We need to get real with the Bitcoin. We need to get real with the Ethereum. Realize these are the opportunities. These are the times when people really make the money. Not the times where uh, it's, it's uh, $25, $30. Bitcoin's $20,000. Some of these times where things are going, are, are going overly optimistic when there really hasn't had much happen or things have happened. So I think this is a good time. The other thing I want to talk about tonight too is that uh, uh, YouTube has enacted their child protection. I think it's with the Federal Trade Commission. As far as child protections are concerned, as far as their YouTube videos, the content creators. So um, like in my case, a lot of my videos I have set to child friendly. So since I set to child friendly, it removed the comments because uh, YouTube doesn't want to be responsible for the kind of comments people make on YouTube videos. So if you make it child friendly, if you do do that, um, YouTube promises to give you better search rankings, uh, a little better, uh, um, that you show up better for the searches and stuff like that. So in some of my videos, you won't see videos, uh, uh, comments on my older videos. But from the videos that are here now forward, I will go ahead and make it so it's uh, it's adult videos. So you will see it. But if you make it so it's child friendly, you probably won't ever get a video taken down. I've got over 1500 videos up. I don't want to have any of my content taken down. So that's why I set it that way. Um, but any videos from here forward, I will set it so that it's uh, adult material. So uh, so if you see one of some of my old videos, you don't see the comments, that's the reason why. Um, I don't really care about, you know, if people want to comment, they've already probably already commented. And I'm more concerned about my future content than on my, on my past comment content. So you'll see that. But that is kind of interesting that YouTube has done done this. I mean, they're being overly protective. I mean, it's kind of like if you watch very much football and you watch, um, you know, the football in uh, because of the lawsuits and because of the the trauma for the head injuries, because of the, the, the head, the com. Uh, helmet to helmet contact now they've gotten they've gotten to be overly um protective of that so you know, like in college football you do a you do a helmet to helmet contact you're gonna get thrown out of the football game i think people from ohio state know that they saw that in that clemson game uh where the, a kid ran into the quarterback with his helmet and bang he was out of the game now in the pro game they're doing the same thing except they get fined so now they're being overly protective of that because uh you know they got sued by uh, a lot of the players that have had uh, um, the, the head trauma. So, because they had the head trauma and they've laid out a lot of money in lawsuits, and, and now they're gonna try to remedy that by telling you, if you have a head-to-head -head comment, we're gonna penalize you. So that shows you that we're trying to do something about the game. They're trying to save the game. They're trying to protect the game. And they're trying to keep the players safe. So in, so, so in the long run, it really does benefit people, even though uh, the, the people don't think the game's played quite as well as it used to be played when you can get up there and get your head in there and hit somebody head to head, but you can't do that anymore. The game's changed. Well, that's the way this is. The game has changed. Uh, YouTube wants to be overly protective of children because they've gotten some people to complain. They want to protect uh, their part of the market. Uh, they don't want to have uh, 
you know, children that are coming back and saying, hey, I've been damaged because of what I saw on YouTube. So they're gonna put it back on the content creators. So you gotta be careful what you put on. Or if you do put something on, you gotta make sure that you've made it, um, you have told YouTube what it is that, that, that you've done and you know they can they can adjust it to uh to however they want to handle it at that point so at least you got to keep them up to date so anyway that's the way it is um so like i say got to get real about these things got to get real and realize where we're at and not get overly negative or not be too much um overly positive when things get too good but right now i think we're way way too much on the negative side of it i appreciate you watching thank you very much